grave You're a constant through the trials and the change One thing remains One thing remains Your love never fails, it never gives up It never runs out on me Never give up, it never runs
we thank you, God, because your love never fails. We thank you because your name is beautiful. We thank you because you are a merciful God. Father, Lord, we thank you because you are the creator of the universe. Elohim, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of adoration. Thank you, Jesus.
You are welcome to day two of the Wings of Change Conference 2022. Wings of Change is a mighty move of God and I pray you are expectant for what God is about to do today. So let us pray. The Bible tells us in Psalm 136 verse 1 that, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his mercies endure it forever. I want us to lift up our voices. I want us to bless God. I want us to thank him. And why are we thanking him? Because God has been good to us. God has started with us marvelously. The first day was powerful. How can we thank God for his presence? How can we thank God for his goodness? How do we thank God for his might? Lift up your voice and begin to thank God. Thank God that you are here, that you are here to participate in day two of the Wings of Change Conference. Lift up your voice, begin to exalt his name, begin to thank God because he is good. Begin to worship him, begin to exalt him because his mercies endure forever. Now I want us to lift up our voice and begin to ask God to have his way. We want God to have his way through day two of Wings of Change. We don't want to see ourselves, we don't want to see man, we don't want to see flesh we want to encounter God so lift up your voices and say Lord I want to encounter you we want to encounter you we want to see you move today we want to see you have your way father we say have your way over day two have your way in this conference in the mighty name of Jesus oh father we thank you Father, we bless your holy name. We give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. Father, tonight we are expectant for what you are about to do. Touch lives, transform destinies. We ask, so oh God, that you will breathe upon us today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Now, leading us in a powerful time of worship, please join me in making welcome the royal Christ. Good evening church, we welcome you to yet another evening in this Winds of Change conference where we have an opportunity to express our love to the Saviour. Just wherever you are, in your home, in your car, in your kitchen, at work, I want you to take a moment and just express your love to the Saviour. He's been so good to us, he's been so kind to us, he's been faithful to us. So without any restrictions, without any encumbrances, just lift up your voice worship him this evening thank you god with no restrictions father you
Father, we say yes to you. And we know that yours is the name we call on. We don't call on anyone else. We don't call on Buddha. We don't call on Muhammad. We don't call on Krishna. We only call on the name that is above every other name. We call on Jesus. We call on Yahweh. We call on our King in Israel. We call on you, oh God. Yes. So in your homes, wherever you are right now, just call on this name, Jesus, and watch those mountains move. Watch the situations move. Watch the circumstances change. Yours is the name we call on when other names have failed us. You've never failed. You've never failed. You're the mighty deliverer, the righteous run.
you're up in space, we are connected in our spirit. Right here, right now, we know that the presence of the Lord is wherever you are. He is with us. He is with you in your home, in your car. Just declare that there's a miracle that is happening where you are. If you need healing, declare the healing of the Lord. If you need deliverance, declare the deliverance of the Lord. The atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here The atmosphere is here. It's connecting us together. The evidence is all around us. Yeah. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love. Your You're the reason 
time of worship we could just stay here we can just tabernacle in his presence indeed God is here indeed God has visited us with his presence so I welcome you again and I remind you to raise your expectation raise your expectation for what God is about to do this evening and I want to read a scripture to us Romans 8 verse 19 says for the earnest expectation of the Creator waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Church, I believe that we're in a dispensation where God is calling the church to a place of relevance, where God is challenging us to occupy till he returns. God is saying that creation is waiting for you and I to manifest. So I want you to do me a favor. I want you to type it in that group. I want you to type it in the comment section right now. That creation is waiting for my manifestation. I want you to send this link. And as you send this link, I want you to put in that, in that comment bar, God is waiting for your manifestation. Now leading us in a time of ministration, again, is the royal tribe following the royal voices. Father, I will come tonight to give you all the worship. We approach the throne of mercy, the throne of grace. We open our heart to receive from you tonight. We confess that we don't have the strength of our own. We don't have the will of our own. We just want your will to be done in our lives tonight in the name of Jesus. Why didn't you join me and worship the King of Kings, the giver of life? The author of salvation, the ruler of all things. Father, we love you, love you, love you, love you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. The heavens are telling, telling. Great you are, and we are responding to your love. And oceans are rising, rising and falling to your world. We
Lift up your lip blessings only in the
change. You were faithful till the end. Faithful God, I worship you. You're too faithful to fill me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You've proven yourself in my life, and I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail.
free Release and power Restore and walk the devil's stone The wings of change The wings that make the change Oh yeah Changing my life, set my spirit free. Now there is power to claim back what the devil stole. Winds of change, the winds that made the change. Put your hands together now. Put your hands together now. Do you believe in love? Winds of change is blowing. It's blowing, blowing. The winds of change, yeah. The winds of change.
we have had so far. I want to appreciate God for the ministry in songs by Royal Voices and the TRT. Thank you so much for all the efforts. Thank God for the prayers you have prayed. I want to believe you are enjoying the conference so far. Today is day two of these amazing winds of change. Occupy till I come. Tonight, I'm very persuaded of mighty things that will be happening. We have one of our friends that will be ministering all the way from Sweden. 
is God a word for us. This man of God ministered at a convention we had hosted many years ago, two years ago in particular, and he brought a word. That word has never left any of us. He pastors in Sweden by the grace of God, and I know tonight it will be a blessing to you. Would you shout a good amen? Now then, before I introduce the man of God, can I challenge you? Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, would you take time now in the next 35, 40 seconds to, in, to invite your family, friends, everyone you know to come and join you now to listen to the word of God? Why? God is about to speak to us again. Invite them to this conference so that their change can be seen. In the name, listen, you don't want to be selfish, do you? Absolutely not. So let's do it together. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is uh, PDSO, and I'm going to be introducing to you Pastor Frederick. Pastor Frederick is a senior pastor of Edvig's Glon Skrikan in Gale. I know you're going to laugh at that, isn't it? Sweden, since 2017. The church vision is that every citizen of Gavel needs to get a reasonable chance to receive Jesus Christ. From the vision, they work especially in the field of social work, sports, and students. Pastor Frederick has an amazing revelation of the world. And I know tonight God is going to speak through him to you in Jesus' name. If I were you, I will open up my heart, open up my spirit to receive the word of God. Now remember this. God sends his word. Our responsibility is to receive the word, believe the word, obey the word, and then behave the word. Tonight, I present to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Pastor Frederick Haved. Let's give him a... Winds of Change, welcome. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Fredrik Arvehed and I'm the head pastor of Hedvigslund Kyrkan in Gävle in Sweden. And I especially thank you for inviting me to speak in your conference, Winds of Change. And I'm very honored to be invited to this conference in this way. Now, I want to thank you also for choosing the theme of this conference, Occupy Till I Come, because it... it it matters to me really much what, how we spend our time until Jesus comes back. We are longing for that moment and we are longing many times to get to see his kingdom come truly in this world and, and make justice and things like that. But until he comes, he has a great purpose for you and me to be right where we are at. I just want to pray a short prayer before we start. Thank you, Jesus, that you can choose words from me to uh, somehow challenge or somehow just um, make people around uh, understand who you are better and what purpose you have in each and everyone's life for this time. Thank you, Jesus, that you will help me to choose the right words for this. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, the... The Bible verses that have been chosen is from Luke 19, and it says like this from verses 13. He called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Sir, your mina has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant, he, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, You take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is my mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, your wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I am a hard man? Taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put the money on deposit so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, Take his mina away from him and give it to the one who has ten minas. Sir, they said, he already has ten. He replied, I tell you what, what that 
um, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, it, even what they have will be taken away. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. Now, Jesus is, is actually comparing himself with a very harsh ruler. A harsh ruler of that time, King Herod. And I'm not sure in the depth why he used that comparison. But maybe it was for giving, taking, uh, give, um, to get attention to what he was about to say. Because they knew very much well about this King Herod that has gone away and got um, the, the kingdomship and came back and just ruled out his, his uh, way of the, the kingdom. And, and that king was really hated. In, in that time and I'm not sure in the depth but I can see some things why he is choosing this this parable so that he could get his people to listen to him carefully what is Jesus saying here now the first question I want to put to me myself and you is why did not Jesus take you to heaven the day when you said yes to him why didn't he roll out his 32 feet long limousine with the Archangel Gabriel driving, coming by at the place where you surrendered to the Lord the first time. Wouldn't he, why didn't he just take you home? Why didn't he put up the great um, angel choir to welcome you to the land of glory right at the moment when you said, just Jesus, I want to believe. Because there is a great thing that we have. We need to tell others. There is a, a great lack of the gospel today where you and I live in Europe, in, in different places where there is very little people, very few people knowing about Jesus Christ. But you and I know about Jesus Christ and therefore he didn't take you home. He said there is a purpose to tell others because if you think back of your own life I think back there was someone who told us there was someone who told us about the Lord maybe there was a mother your mother maybe he, she told you very carefully about Jesus and how Jesus loved children maybe it was your father who asked you at the dinner table to ask grace Maybe it was um, an aunt who had a great compassion for elderly people going to them. Maybe bringing you along and, and just show the compassion of, of God for elderly people. Or maybe it was an, an uncle who, who felt a lot for, for people with problems with alcohol and things like that. And, and you were seeing the, the, the work of God through him. So through these uh, members of family or relatives or friends you could see something and and your heart was prepared so 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 when the word became clear for you you even if you may have struggled you said yes Jesus because somebody told you before somebody showed you before the gospel through their lives maybe with words maybe with songs Maybe you didn't even uh, grew up in a Christian family. Maybe you grew up and didn't know nothing about this. And you came up and you, you were an adult and, and you met people who really believed in this. And they told you. So the words that you heard, you had to test these things. You had to go through a process of thinking, is this for me? And when you said yes, you had this um, relief. You were... You, were, you, you could um, uh, take in the love of God and you could see how he changed your life. And all these because somebody told you and somebody told me. And, and I myself as a kid, I grew up in a Christian family, but I had to take um, a stand for Jesus <laughs> as early as and when I was six year old, I bent my knees. And together with my, my father, we prayed for, for, for me as a sinner to become saved. And I remember the relief after that prayer. I knew the Lord in a new way. I had received grace. 
and there was a new start in my life that was changing a lot of things even for a six-year-old guy and so because of all these things you and I also need to tell others we have surrendered but we are still on earth and we have a great mission now you may feel really weak in this area you may feel that you don't have a talent or uh, a way of telling your workmates you think about your workmates at work how can i how can i tell how can i live a life that they will see jesus christ how can i reach my neighbors how can i do this and you may feel so um, limited in who you are and you may feel like i am not creative in this area i know other things i know my business i know how to to care for my family and, and i know this and that but to reach out to others i feel so limited i tell you this go to the one walk to the one who is the master of creation the master of creation. I, I just look at creation and I see. Have you seen? Have you seen the create uh, the creature puffer fish? You know the little small fish. When that when it meets an enemy fish or somebody who wants to eat it, it just it takes in water and it expands three times its volume. And, and there's spikes going out. So these other animals that looks at it, it goes, whoa, I'm not choosing that one. I'm choosing someone else that looks a bit easier to, to eat. Uh, isn't that an amazing creature? It actually takes in water from the sea into its belly and it just expands. How did that happen? Did it create it itself? No. There's a master of creation the God that created all heavens and earth who, who geniusly um, created this thing called a puffer fish. It, I would never even come up with the idea. I couldn't even understand how to start, but the God of universe has done that. Or the, perhaps you've seen the creature called a walking stick. <laughs> Very strange creature. A small piece that looks like a small piece of, of dry wood with six legs on the sides that actually can walk and and well not talk but it, it can it can meet friends and, 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 and there can be new walking sticks so it, it actually has a kind of life it's it's just a very strange creature I would never come up with this idea but God who is the master of creation who is so creative he has come up with this because he saw that this planet would be filled with creatures that just shows his master plan and his, his, how creative he is. Now go to this God, please, and ask him, how can I reach my neighbors? You who are the master of creation, you who are so creative, how can you help me? And you know what his answer will be? His answer will be, what minas did I give you? What talents have I already given to you, my friend, my son, or my daughter? And, and you may look at yourself again and you say, I don't seem to have a talent to tell others. I don't seem to have a specific talent. Now, there are people in the word. There are people in the scripture who have replied exactly the same way as you do right now. And one of them is Moses. God had a specific calling for him. Take, bring my people out of Egypt. Ooh, that's not a small calling. That's a huge calling. After 400 years in Egypt, in slavery, Moses was supposed to be the one taking them out of this because God called him. And he was in the desert at this time. He was, he was um, helping his father-in-law, Jethro, with, with uh, his herds, tending the flock, and God shows up. Uh, there's a fire in this bush that doesn't stop. Uh, the fire doesn't stop. God comes closer and, and, and the Lord says, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And then there's a conversation starting up between Moses and God, and God <laughs> really keeps telling Moses, just go. 
Go and do this. Go and do that. Take my people out of Egypt. Take my people out of slavery. But Moses, he is really hard to to um, to to um, to tell, and 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 he just gives all these things against this and says, "No, please, Lord, please send someone else." He says in, in verses 13, uh, in chapter 3 in Exodus, he says, Pardon your servant, Lord, please send someone else. And you may be in that place. Please, Lord, let someone else go and tell my neighbors. You may even pray that at night. You feel a burden that be because you just don't know how to do it, or your workmates, or whoever it is. But God doesn't just receive that prayer. He didn't receive that prayer from Moses and said, okay. Well, he actually uh, tells Moses, well, you can use your, your brother, but you still have this mission. It's still you. And, and this is quite a long conversation. It's, it's, um, it's not just one chapter. It's, it goes on into the fourth chapter of Exodus. And, and there's, there's still this, this, this conversation because he is so reluctant, Moses. And... And when we come into the first verse of Exodus 4, it says like this, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? Have you felt this, that you are reluctant to God's calling? I tell you what, this has happened before. And God is, is a great God. He's a compassionate God. And He will just do a few things with you when you do this and what did he do with moses he did this at this stage he said then the lord said to him what is that in your hand and moses replied a staff you know god god never asks you about things you do not have he never asks of things that he has not already given you but things that you already have, he will ask, where did you put this talent? Where is that? It's, is it hidden in the cloth? Or do you, have, do you remember what I've given you? And Moses looked in his hands and, and he just had a piece of wood. Just probably a piece of old wood. It was good for its purpose, but it's just a piece of wood. It's not much. But God said, throw this to the ground and then God did a miracle with this piece of wood so it, it turned into a, a serpent and Moses was able to take it by the tail and when he did this it turned into a piece of wood again and he could do this sign in front of the people in front of of, of the king of Egypt so this simple piece of wood became a tool a talent a resource that would speak volumes about God's creativity and sovereignty and, and power in front of the greatest kings of the earth. Just this piece of wood. It wasn't Moses, really, but it was God, what God had given Moses, what he had in his hand. So the th same question, it goes to you and me now, today. What have I already given you, says the Lord? You're asking for new things. But God has already planted things into my, my life and into your life. And Moses could not see because Moses had a, a struggle with talking. He couldn't talk straight. He, he's, he, was, he was kind of, it got stopped in his mouth and, and people can get that. So, and God knew this, but still it was a mission that God gave to, to Moses and he, he permitted him to, to use his brother. So you speak through Aaron. And, and they became a good couple to, to do this mighty task. But I tell you what, even if you are really reluctant, God wants to use you. And he wants to use something that he already given you. Now, you may say, I don't have money. No, but I say you can't pay people to heaven. But you can pray people to heaven, right? Um, if you don't have money, you don't have much, maybe you, we can compare this, this piece of wood with something in your life. Maybe you have an old car. Oh, you're so ashamed of that old car. It's, it's, it's almost, you know, cracking down. 
you go over some things and it goes in a different direction and it just a lousy car. Maybe God wants you to use that to take someone to a place where they can hear the gospel in a different way. Maybe he wants you to use that in some sort or, or an old house. Or, it doesn't have to be beautiful. God can use whatever you have in your life. But ask the God of creation who has created everything and, and you will get creative in your ideas. He will give you ideas of what you can use to bring out the gospel to tell someone else. Now, there's been more people in this, in this book that we read, the Bible, who has been really, really reluctant. And I will end up with an illustration and just remind you and me about a different guy who got also a really huge task and just ran off. And you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Jonah. And this is one of the, the oldest books in, in the Bible, I've been told. And he was called to go to a city called Nineveh, a large city of this time with 120,000 people, approximately. And, and God was telling Jonah, go there and preach. Go there and preach. I've heard of the city's wickedness. You know, things have come to the Lord about how these people in this city have done stupid things. Perhaps they had cultural things that were really strange and odd and not in in the will of god and jonah he was a hebrew he knew the lord and he was told from his childhood to keep separated from other people because that was the case and and he just probably felt well if nineveh goes to hell i'm not sorry and 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 he was he was just taking a hike off and he said no i will not go i can't do that i'm not it's just against of what i've learned really and i tell you this you may be one of those that has come from different people groups to europe or somewhere else and you have come here and you just try to make yourself a better way of living to get a little bit more decent life and you may have fled from different difficulties. And I tell you what, as you are here now to your new home country, I tell you what, you have, there's a purpose of that more than you being surviving. We are not in a surviving mode as Christians, as brothers and sisters, we're not just hiding and surviving until he comes. That is not what Jesus uh, meant about the talents and the minas. It was not just to say, it is about to tell the others. And you may have a calling, my friend, to not just reach your old fellows from your home country and the ones you have the same uh, mother tongue with, but even the strangers you live among. You have, a lot of you may have a calling from God to speak to these people of different skin color, of, of different culture, of with, with different habits, who, who loves uh, Manchester City when you love Liverpool, <laughs> when, when, who, who eats pudding then, and you do not, you eat curry or whatever. And, but you still have a calling to these people because God has a compassion for these people and they do not know. They, they, they have a lack of understanding and knowledge and, and wisdom in who God is. And you have those things. But you may feel, oh, I cannot do that. I can't go to these people and those people in the workplace and, and tell them they will not understand me. And Jonah felt the same. Or even he felt that I don't belong to that people group. I don't. I don't, you know, relate to those people. They don't have the same background as I do. And he ran off. But you know the story about Jonah. He had to go there instead. He, he went off and he, he went up in the, in the belly of a fish. And, and the fish vomited up him up. And he said, okay, Lord, I'll go there. And then he preached for these people. And the people started to repent they started to 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 turn their ways 
and and they started to ask the Lord for forgiveness. It was a successful preacher. He was he he had a great success. All the city uh, put themselves in sackcloth. They 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 started to repent. It was a great success. And what happened to Jonah when he saw this? He got so misery. You can read about this in it's just a, a small book in the Bible. It's just four chapters. It's easy to read and it's so amazing to see that Jonah he was sitting and trying to see the city's fall. But God he he gave them he saw the repentance of the people and he gave them mercy. He gave them grace. And Jonah, you know what his reaction was? I want to die. I think there was at least two things about this. I think he was ashamed. He had been walking around telling people that God will judge them and this didn't happen. He was ashamed that he as a Hebrew went there and talked about God. He felt probably that this people group I don't care about them. I don't have the love for them. I don't care what God if God going to kill them all. They are probably my enemies anyways. Why should I care for this people? And now he reluctantly did this and God showed these people mercy. And so 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 Jonah was really he was full of shame. It didn't happen the way he was hoping. And he was the Hebrew with the law and everything and this was a different people group. Why would he ever care about this? And you may not feel like Jonah where you are and looking at the people around you but you may you may have this act, act actually you can see that you are in the place of Jonah in the way that you feel shame uh, and i just want to take a small time now before i end where there may be people that are listening now that you are somehow trapped between worlds you have come to a different place and your friends that you are with and especially the kids of of uh, younger people can become trapped in the worlds between the old culture and the new one and the old culture where you come from wants you to just keep acting as you always done and the new culture has a different value has a different way of acting has a different way of seeing upon things and you as a young guy or girl can be trapped between worlds and you are full of shame just like Jonah was he was full of shame but you know what if you are in that situation i just want to encourage you that jesus wants to hold your hand really tight this time these days don't ever go to a bridge and jump off don't walk in front of a bus because you are so full of shame this shame Jesus wants to take out of your life. You may seem to be trapped between worlds and between cultures and different ways. But Jesus, he wants to reach into your heart and he wants to hold your hand and he wants to hear everything from you, how you feel. You can talk to him and he can walk you through this time of shame because that will end. He has taken your shame on the cross. Now, you may be people who are called to preach into these settings of different cultures strange behaviors strange values that seems very ungodly but god will give you what jonah did not receive until the end because at least in the end he understood god has a compassion for everyone he loves everyone and he seeks every nation of this world and whoever you are listening to this you have a calling from him to reach whoever is around you as long as you and i are here we need to use our talents don't hide it in the cloth don't wait until jesus comes back and act like a harsh ruler and ask you what did you do with your talent why did you hide it This time is not a time for hiding ourselves for hiding the pandemic is about to end very soon i'm sure and we have a time gap here when we need to reach out to every, each and every one around us with the gospel how ask the master of creation how you can do it i don't know 
I don't know the setting around you, but God knows. And even if you feel ashamed in, in these different worldviews and different cultures, God will walk you through this shame and he will use you because he has a compassion for the people around you, whoever you meet. If there are people from Somalia, if there are people from the Middle East you meet, if there are people from Sweden, or if there are people from whatever country, God has a compassion for these people and he has put talents in you and he just asks you, please use these talents I've given you till I come. And I will fill you with the Holy Spirit now so that there will be power in the work of God not just uh, things that looks powerless and, and harsh and, and hard. You will have happiness and joy in the work of God as you ask him for it. So now I will quickly just pray a prayer for you that you will be filled by the spirit of the Lord Almighty so that you can go on and tell others about his kingdom and, and uh, the salvation in his name. Jesus, I ask you that everyone that's been listening to this sermon will be filled of joy and new ideas and creative, creative thoughts about their neighbors and workmates and whoever is around. I ask you to put grace to the ones who have, have been trapped into shame, different walks of shame. I ask those walks of shame to be stopped in the name of Jesus. I thank you that you instead will fill these people with joy of the Holy Spirit so that your work can be done until you come. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Wow, wow. Thank you so much, Pastor Frederick. What a word. May God replenish you. May the fountain of your wisdom never diminish in the name of Jesus Christ. We are glad. How many are going to walk with that word? Now, actually, walk with it, W-R-K, and also walk with it. But better still, how many are going to run with the word? You see, when you run with it, that means you are appropriating the word to maximize what God has said, what God is saying, and what God will yes say. Now, listen to this. In every word, there is a way you receive the word. All of us may hear the same thing, but actually not perceive the same thing. So whatever you have perceived that have become a revelation to you, would you take it upon yourself and begin to run with it in Jesus' name? Because that is the plan of God for this hour, that you as a child of God, you must occupy till he comes and occupy we shall in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, <laughs> occupy means take over, have dominion. We are not just hanging around. We are here to demonstrate that Jesus is Lord. We are here to show forth the glory of the Lord. We are here to show forth and expand the kingdom of God. Occupy with your talents. Occupy with your giftings. Occupy with your ability. Listen, there is no man who is poor in life. The only man who is poor is the man who has not recognized the giftings of God in them, who has chosen to ignore the giftings, and who has refused to invest the giftings. Hear me now? There are talents in you. Can I challenge you? You are a warehouse of talents. You are a warehouse of gifting. You are a warehouse of ability of God that was invested in you before you came to the world. Now your assignment, my assignment, is to discover those things is to develop them and ultimately deploy them to be able to occupy. Look at our brother in the story we've been considering. The guy that was given, he took his talent and he did. Can you imagine? And the man said, hold on, hold on. The owner of the kingdom said, wait a minute. If you have planted it, I would have gotten some interest. Oh Lord, I pray. May you never ever despise what God has given you in Jesus' name. May you never look away from what God has given you. May you focus on that which heaven has given you, that you may appropriate it and maximize it in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the word we have received tonight, that all of us, we have a place in life. Come on, shout with me. I have a place in destiny. Very good. You have a place. Number two, I must occupy my place. Shout it. I must occupy my place. So there is a place for me. There is a responsibility. I must occupy my place. Number three, 
I must dominate my place. I got to dominate it. I got to be in charge. Now listen, what you don't dominate, you give the enemy chance to take over. And the Lord says, occupy it till I come. No retreat, no surrender. We are not giving in. We are not giving up. We are taking over by the spirit of the living God. We are occupying, maximizing our potentials, doing the best with God, what God has given us. Maximizing our responsibilities and our results in the name of Jesus Christ. I see you receiving rewards what this year in Jesus name I see you dominating occupying for Jesus in the name of the Lord winning souls enlarging the kingdom pushing back barriers in the name of the Lord that's what he has called us to do that's what he has called us to do whatever nation you have joined us from whatever city you have joined from please hear me and hear me well occupy till Jesus comes it's our responsibility I want to show you a man who understood this mystery in the Bible there's a man you know very well he's called Noah Noah was a man that when his father gave birth to him, the man said, this man, this one shall comfort us as regards the toiling of our lands, the toiling of our hands. Noah was a child of comfort. He was born at a very precarious time. But the father said, pro prophetically, this boy shall comfort us regarding the toiling of our hands. And so Noah became different among the Lord. He was a game changer. He was a man that was different from the rest of the crowd. But something very peculiar about Noah, ladies and gentlemen, was Noah had God. He knew he had an assignment from God. He occupied his place of his assignment. Noah kept building an ark almost one 20 years, became a laughing stock, yet he never gave up on it. He kept doing it. He kept doing it. He kept doing it because there was a time for the fulfillment of the vision. Now that's Noah. Noah stayed in the ark, cut a long story short, there was flood. The, the flood tossed him to and fro. Eventually, when the water settled, Noah came out of the ark. But there is something Noah did that I thought was fantastic. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 8, Look at a man who knew how to occupy his place. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 to 22. Number one, Noah, remember, he heard from God. He knew he had an assignment. He knew he had a gifting to build an ark. He had to learn how to do it, but he kept doing it. Nobody believed on him because they are not seeing rain. But Noah never gave up. In the name of the Lord, my God, I feel like preaching to you. You will not give up on divine assignment in Jesus' name. You will not give up on your family in Jesus' name. Can I speak to somebody now? You are the precipice. You are the precipice of divorce. You want to file a divorce. Can I challenge you? Can you hear God through me tonight? Don't give up on that marriage. Don't give up just yet. Why don't you make an effort? My God, the Bible says, uh, yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. There is a blessing in the clutches, Holy Spirit. A blessing in the clutches of the grave. Don't throw it away. Don't give up on it. God can still bring life. He can still refresh it. Listen, that is your place you are given by God to occupy. Dominate there. Take over because God has a blessing in it. Now, thank you, Lord. That was a divine interruption. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So Noah built this ark, occupied this place. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 20, let's conclude it. The Bible says, Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's earth is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Listen, no I knew I had to occupy my place. Even when the flood had assuaged and he had come out of the ark, the first thing he did was so provocative and so powerful that he provoked a blessing God had never given any man before. He provoked a response from heaven that heaven had never said before. Noah was a game changer. He was a record breaker. He provoked heaven to respond in the way they've never done before. What did he do? He built an altar to the Lord. Sir, Ma, in 2022, will you be an altar builder? You see, the altar you build speaks for you when it matters. In the name of the Lord, may you be an altar builder. Number two, 
Noah didn't allow his altar to be empty. Glory to Jesus. My God, have you built a prayer altar? A worship altar? Have you built a giving altar? His altar was not empty. Oh, may your altar not be empty this year. Listen to this. The Bible says he, 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 took, he took every clean fowl. What this? Unclean beast went also. But he took of the clean ones. Ah, he gave God the best, the most attractive. He placed on his altar. And suddenly, the Bible says it was a burnt offering. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. Oh, Jesus. From your life, from your ministry, from your business, from your destiny. May God smell a sweet savor this year in the name of Jesus. May your presence bring sweet savor to heaven. May your offering bring sweet savor to heaven. May your service bring sweet savor to heaven in the name of Jesus. Noah provoked heaven because he wanted to occupy his place. He wasn't going to give in to the enemy. And suddenly, Noah became what I call a revelation giver. You see, because there are different kinds of givers. There's a revelation giver, a covenant giver, emotional giver. But Noah did something, I call him regenerational. He planted the seed, he did something that made everyone respond the way they've never responded before. Today, can I challenge you to be like Noah? Occupy your place financially. Bring an offering to the Lord. Listen, don't give an offering as usual. Noah brought clean fowl, clean beast. And as he did that, everyone responded and gave him a promise. You can provoke a promise from the Lord by the next action. May the Lord bless you. Bow your head. Ask the Lord, what shall be my giving at this time? And as you respond prophetically and prayerfully, you will see the hand of God move on your behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba Father. You will occupy till you come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a praise today. dance while you are giving your offering? I'm sure you did. Wow. Were you excited about what you have just done? Glory be to Jesus. Now, the next thing is, please know this. As we bring service to a close tonight, I'd like you to remember to please invite everyone in your world. You see, what's beautiful is that people can log on from anywhere, no matter the time zone, to be part of what God is doing. By the grace of God, tomorrow we continue on this journey in the name of Jesus and the word will be coming again to us tomorrow. My God, I can't wait because getting better and better by the day in the name of Jesus. After such an opening, after such a word tonight, tomorrow is another time. Beloved brother and sister, 
Have you told everyone? Have you shared it? What have you learned tonight? Would you appropriate it? Would you believe it? Would you obey it? Would you behave it? Listen, it is in the doing that there's a miracle. I see a miracle in your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Nobody will displace you from your place in Jesus' name. Come on, shout a good amen to that. Nobody, no devil will displace you from your place in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Can I pray for you? Holy Spirit, thank you for tonight. Thank you for what you have done. We are truly grateful. We release ourselves to you tonight that you bless Pastor Frederick. Bless everyone who have ministered in one shape or the other. And Lord, let tomorrow be yet better and stronger than this. Let it keep getting stronger in the name of Jesus. Let this place of change never leave anyone the way it met us. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Shall we confess together? God bless you as we do the confession. 2022 is a year of God and God alone. God is the center of my life body, soul, and spirit. I trust in Him, hope in Him, live to please Him. God is blessing me, you and Royal Connections. Together, we are living witnesses for Christ. Jesus is Lord. Amen.